Alrighty y'all, welcome to Ellis Mowers. We're on part two of this Craftsman DLT riding mower with the 25 horsepower V-twin Briggs and Stratton on it. We got it running and cutting in the first part. Now we're gonna figure out how to get this thing to turn off on its own. And we'll see what other wiring things we can get into and also we'll sharpen the blades and do a few other service items on it. So the first thing we're gonna do, I've already taken the wiring harness out of it. I haven't taken it out out, but I've taken it out enough that I can see it. And uh what is it tie there? But uh so what I have done so far is I've tested this switch and if I can show y'all I've got the ohms on it. So what we're looking for is the magneto and the ground, right? The ground's right here, the magneto's right here. You'll see both of them have black wires on them. So now when you connect the ground terminal and the magneto terminal, like so, I don't think you get anything with the key out of it, but let's put the key in it. you should be getting zero ohms there we go so I've got a wonky so there's your I've got a wonky uh, voltmeter here all right so zero ohms right turn the switch on let me get that right. See, it goes to open loop. Turn it off. Goes back to zero. So we've got a good, we've got a good ignition switch. I've just got to route a wire from the magneto terminal on the switch here to where's my magneto wire? to this wire right here so it grounds out the uh, coil whenever I turn it off. So I'm gonna, I've got the wiring harness apart. I'm gonna see what I can, I'm gonna take off my little plastic coverings and whatnot. I'm gonna see what wire I can potentially tap into that goes up to the magneto portion of the switch, which is this one right here. We're looking at it upside down. So it's gonna be like right there. And uh, we'll figure that out. And uh, like I said, we'll see what we got. Um, we'll see what we got. Um, we know that this this wire right here will blow a fuse whenever it will ground it out, but it blows a fuse whenever you have the switch on still. So that's not the correct wire. It's an accessory wire. So let me do a little bit of work. I'm going to take this sheathing off right here, and we'll see where we can tap into a ground wire so that we can uh, run it up to the magneto and ground this thing out. Okay, so the brake safety switch has been bypassed on this thing already. What I have found is that I have one, one wire here. Which one is it? I've traced it down from the magneto. I believe it's this wire. It's the one that's all bowed out here. This wire right here goes right into the safety for the uh, for the magneto. That one right there. Let me get this right. Let me set y'all down for a second. That way it doesn't seem like it. make y'all throw up. Let me trace the wires one more time. I want to make sure I get this right. That 
that one's actually going that one's actually going back to the seat safety I won't touch that one let me see where my second one's going second wire to the magneto right here which in theory if I connect it back to the cutoff there it should work so this is my second wire from the magneto the bottom bottom terminal right here hopefully I can see as much as I can and it, it's been cut off so that's probably our culprit right there so what I can do I've isolated it it was cut off right at the very edge of the sheathing as well so I, I might I just isolate it out of the harness because I might have to reconnect it a little bit more. But I'll go ahead and put the sheathing back on it. And uh, so we found the wire that we need, which makes all the sense, which all makes the most sense. We're gonna isolate it. I'm gonna put, like I said, put the sheathing back on it. have a we have a seat safety on it still from what I can tell we don't have a brake safety and so we've got that wire isolated which will be fine Isolated, got the sheathing out. I'll probably have to lengthen this wire a little bit in order to get it to where I need it to. Um, so, so yeah. So my, now my next thing is I'm going to connect these two wires together after I get all the because I've got all the ground connections and stuff off right now. So I'm going to get all this dressed back up. And then I'll go ahead and continue with um, the whole wiring deal here. And uh, hopefully get this thing to where it'll shut off like it's supposed to. And then we might try and move on to the stator. I don't know if I want to tackle the stator or not. We'll see what I can do. Um, I might just take this stuff back apart just to see where all of it goes. It's like it's missing. It's like it's missing part of the harness. And I can't quite figure out. I can't quite figure out how that works. And so, oh, we'll keep on rolling with it though. We'll see what we can. We'll see what we can muster. All right. So this wire is connected now. Let's see what we have. We have nothing because it won't crank. Yeah. 
Interesting. Might not have any gas in it now. It could also be that I have. It could be that I did it did it wrong. We'll see. Let me throw some starting fluid in it. And see if it'll work. No, so I have grounded it out now. So I've completely grounded out the ignition. So now it should crank. Alright, so that's straight up ground. It ain't gonna let it do anything there. Interesting. Because the switch was testing good and I can't figure out why. Because that's coming straight from the magneto terminal so I wonder if mm, makes you wonder I'll keep investigating I thought I had it Man, I'll keep investigating, see what I can find. Pardon the sun glare, this thing had me second guessing, and I was thinking. I looked, and I didn't have the part breakdown, and so I reconnected it, and watch this. me turning off the switch so that's sorted out now so we've got the PTO sorted out we've got the kills kill switch sorted out now do I even bother with the stator I don't know <laughs> um, in all honesty I don't know um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of studying to see what wires go to what for that um, I'm gonna look on some other lawn tractors out here and see what it, see what they look like, and then I'll go based off of that. But I think there's a ground, isn't there a ground wire that goes to the stator? Maybe not. Like I feel like that wire goes there, and I feel like this orange wire goes there. Cause that's the only two wires that I have left. So I'm not sure, but we're gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit more investigating before I service it. Um, but for now, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go ahead and put all the covers and stuff back on and dress some of this stuff up with electrical tape uh, just so that it's not exposed to the elements, so to speak, and not pose any potential further problems for the next buyer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, um, and then I'm going, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to study, and I'm going to see if I can get the stator working. If we can get that working, we're going to be golden get this thing serviced and get it gone um it's gonna be a great lawn tractor for somebody so let me go ahead and do that real quick and um see if i can figure out how all this deal works right here all right so i have ventured in trying to fix the stator and i have made the determination that i'm missing some sort of wire connector that there used to be here i don't know what happened to it but it's no longer there and it's like they just tried to strip the mower for some reason so I went over here tested or cross-referenced two lawnmowers I had out here in the back to try and figure this out so this has got the 
I guess like an ignition module here or something along those lines. So I checked my John Deere in the back and it's got the same setup with the whole jumper wire and everything here on the coil. Now I went to my Red Craftsman over here and now I told you I had an orange wire and a blue wire. I went to my Craftsman and looked at the connector on it. There's an orange wire and then there's a blue wire connected to a red a red jumper wire that goes to a different terminal. There was no resistance on those. So it was this red wire was just a jumper wire. And then you have your orange wire. So you come over here. I came over here and found my orange wire. And I also found a secondary connector, which I don't know what I've done with right now. But there's a secondary connector that confirmed that the orange wire went into the left side and the blue wire that jumped over to the red wire went into the right side of this terminal here. Like I said, oh, here it is, right over here. So it goes in like, like so, just like that. So I put the orange wire, crimped an orange wire, and crimped the blue wire, which changed to a red wire in this particular case. Crimp those together. Let's turn it, let's turn this on. So you got 12.5 right there. We're about to start it. Hopefully. about 13 and a half charging the battery beautifully so all the wiring snafus are fixed on this thing I'm super happy about it um, I'm gonna dress up some of these with um, I think this is the headlights I'm, I don't well could we get attached the headlights back because I've got the two wires I guess that go to the headlights one and two I got to attach those what do y'all think just make this whole shebang work again, right? As long as it works on the hood still. I don't I think I've still got the... Yeah, everything works on the hood still, so... Might as well try to put the headlights back on it, too. I've got a couple of connectors I can pop on there and uh, see if it works. And uh, we'll have this whole wiring deal sorted out, apart from the uh, anti-backfire, which I'm not worried about in the least. Um... So yeah, very nice. But um, I'm gonna do some electrical tape and we'll get this thing sorted out. All right, y'all, so I've got what I ended up doing off camera. I went ahead and sharpened the blades. The deck was already level for the most part. I didn't really have to do anything to that. Put four tubes in the tires. Um, went ahead and put valve cover gaskets on it. Y'all know my trademark. Put so much red valve or red high temp silicone on it to make it bleed out of its ears, so to speak. The issue now I'm having, everything is working great on it except for one little thing. And the issue I'm having now is that I have a little bit of some sort of, um, there's gotta be a little bit of a blockage in the carburetor because whenever I turn it on, it surges a lot, but then it'll smooth out, but then you hear it like, like misfiring just a little bit on one cylinder. And then when you put the blades on, it surges, um, unless you run a really long time. I've tried to run seafoam through it. It got marginally better, but not good enough to the point that it needs to be. So we're now gonna take these half inch bolts back off, and then I'm gonna take the two 10 millimeter throttle plate bolts back off as well that we did. One, 
and two. And that'll get us access to the carburetor again. And what I would like to do is instead of having to take the entire carburetor off, just take and lower the bowl down off of it and see if we can find a clog there and be able to clean it out so that we don't have to go through the whole process of taking off the entire intake and all this conglomerate of items again to see what we can uh, see what we can accomplish here. I don't think I've got a fuel pump issue because it's pumping fuel great. So I don't know if, like I said, I think I've got a, a partially clogged jet in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do those things with the half inch down here and the 10 millimeters on the inside and we will see what we got. So I'm wondering it's probably a little bit easier to take the whole intake off. I'm trying to mess with this thing. Um, so that's what I've done. I've taken the four 10 millimeter bolts off here. I've taken the throttle cable off the front and uh, I've already loosened the bowl nut up. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the intake. I think that's all that's holding it on, isn't it? Let's see. Like something is holding it on except for that. So now I just have to get this throttle linkage off right here. Or get this governor linkage. That's the governor linkage, sorry. Once I get that governor linkage off, then we'll uh, be able to take this whole intake off. And then I can flip it around and then I can unscrew the carburetor and see what we got inside there. So that's the plan. We'll see how it works out. I'll let you all know in just a second. All right, so I got the whole intake off, and now I have the bowl off as well. <sighs> the best way, to, I don't know the best way to go about taking these bowl screws off, but I ended up having to use, I tried an impact, hand tighten them and doesn't work. I tried an impact, and the impact stripped one of them out, so I had to take an angle grinder to cut some threads in the, bolt not that one but a, the other one that i just had and uh so yeah that was not the most fun thing in the world to do but i got it off let me show you the setup so i came in and the main jet is situated like this in the in the bowl in the card bowl took it off as you can see i've got some gunk build up in there not too bad, but we're going to blow it all out. Let's take the bowl off real quick. And the needle. Neither of those are too bad. I could take this off just to see how bad it is up top, but I don't think it's terrible. Um, but I bet that that... I don't know if I can get into some sun so that I can show you. There's a little bitty tiny... There's like some gunk in there. And just a little bit of gunk in there. You see it? So I'm going to take some carb spray, spray it off, and also clean out the bottom of the bowl right here and see if that helps matters any in terms of it running. I mean, it's so close. It's just barely misfiring just a little bit. I'm tempted while I got the carb off to take these screws off, and I guess this is like a jet. I'm going to take that off and just make sure that it looks good. Um, the needle and seat look good. It's not leaking or anything. I might just throw some carb spray in there. Um, I don't know what's on the top of the motor here. Or on top of the intake, excuse me. I got these three screws. I'm tempted to take those off to see what I got there too. Um, never have taken one of these apart. Haven't really even looked at any videos how to take them apart. So we're going to take it apart. We're going to give it a good thorough cleaning and put it back on the mower and see what we got. All right, so someone that wants to educate me a little bit more is more than welcome to on this video. So I've got, like I said, I've got the main jet. I took this off, and it looks like it goes down like so on there. It also looks like I've got two little jets that go that run up into the, each intake. Those look clean. I just think I had a little bit of debris in these this main jet here. 
that was causing the issue. I don't see any low side jet on this one like like on the single cylinder Briggs. Um, it could be up top. Um, I tried taking the screws off and the gasket didn't want to come off so I'm just gonna I'm assuming that that all my issues are on the bottom end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop everything back together, put these two screws back on, put the needle and seat and float back or the needle and float back in and then I'm going to slap it back on the mower see if it runs any better. All right, so after a little bit more troubleshooting, y'all saw the carburetor apart in the previous clip. I want to explain to you what I did that I did not show on video, and I wanted to test to make sure that it worked before I actually we actually tried something. So I took the carburetor off a second time because it was surging just like it was before. You'll see the nut, the big brass looking nut that has the main jet on it. So that main jet there's like a couple of you can take a screwdriver and screw it out so what I did is I screwed out the main jet and I wish I had caught this on video I screwed out the main jet and shot carb cleaner through it and I got and I noticed that the hole got noticeably larger when I did that and so I did that and put it back together and I'll show you how it runs now because I don't even know if I got on video how it was surging back and forth earlier. But the only weird thing I've noticed about it is that the way that they cut the safety whatever on it, and I'm not really concerned about it, is that you can try it and that it'll turn over with the park brake off, but it will not fire without the park brake off. The seat safety works with the blades on, so that's the biggest thing. And I've got a little sea foam in the tank. That's why you still see it. Sir, or I'm smoking a little bit whenever I shut it off. I am going to cut the front yard with it. So, um, I'm just going to put this intake pipe back on, even though it is cracked. That was frustrating, guys. I spent most of the afternoon trying to figure this out. But, I wanted to figure it out because this lawnmower is easily a $700 mower. Remember, I have $100 in it. So, and I have basically an oil change and my time. Basically, a couple, or four tire tubes and oil change and my time, which is basically about six or seven hours. So, you can do the math on that. New battery as well. <laughs> I just keep adding things up, you know. But, um, dex level, tires are good. Motor's running good. All I gotta do is put the engine shroud back on, the little exhaust deal there, um, heat shroud. I just gotta put it all back together. I'm gonna take pictures of it. I'm gonna cut the grass with it. And then we're gonna give a final look and test of this thing. All right, y'all, here is the final product. I just finished cutting grass with it. DLT Craftsman 25 horse Briggs. V twin. I wonder what these things cost new in 2000. I bet you could get one of these things for about, I don't know, 1800 bucks. What would you? I wasn't really in the mower business at that point in time, so I'm not sure what these things cost in 2000, the year 2000 dollars. But it's like they made like a bunch of special edition type deals around this time, like the DLT, I know the Bob Vila, and then I had the uh, LT 1750 limited edition earlier. Super nice lawnmower. Sorry, my nose is a little stuffed up. I just got finished cutting. But there's no issues with this thing. It's ready to rock and roll. The only thing I could suggest to the new buyer is... A new mulching cover or a new side discharge chute, neither of which I have. 
and also also it'll crank without the parking brake down but it won't fire so you just have to make sure you have the parking brake down for it to fire and you're in good shape but let me take you up down the driveway for a second then we'll end this video definitely one of the nicer between i think this one tops a 1750 honestly to be the nicest lawnmower i've gotten ready for this riding mower i've gotten ready so far so here we go <laughs> pops a little bit here and there but it's, it's not surging anymore which is the goal there you go we'll pop the blades on working great safety switches are working good too watch this lift my, lift my rear end off the seat you'll hear it misfire a little bit here and there I don't know if you can hear that, but it's running smooth now. It was surging earlier. And you idle it down. It idles beautifully. It looks good. They, I'll go ahead and turn it off. The headlights don't work, but I tried, but I failed on that one. Ooh, that thing tried to run again. I'm backwards. It does that every once in a while. But, uh, this thing turned out super nice. I don't know why the wiring on it was a basket case, and I had to clean the carburetor out on it. But I ran a lot of sea foam through it, cleaned out the carburetor, put tire tubes in it. Again, I got $100 in the mower plus tire tubes, a battery. I've got maybe $160 in it. I'm going to list it for $750. I think I'll get every bit of $700 for it. It is a beautiful lawnmower super nice i know that um hopefully all of y'all feel the same way about it i'm glad that i got it going only took me a couple of days thankfully to really work on it and get get it going the only cosmetic damage to it really is this this dent right here and there's a dent right here and that's about it everything else on it is perfect you would never guess that this lawnmower is 20 years old looking at it but uh, I think it's 20 years old. Might be a couple of years newer than that because it's got the Intec motor on it. Yep, 717-2000. So, yep, 20 years old almost. And uh, I'll tell you, it's hard to beat one of these older Craftsmen like this. I, did, I didn't put, put it on camera. Y'all might have seen it kind of in a couple of shots I did. I just turned around a 42 inch Craftsman in a day's time. Um, I've got a Husqvarna over there, which is basically a Craftsman equivalent. And then a bunch of Craftsman stuff back there in the back. I got a mix of a little bit of everything right now. But all these Craftsmen seem like they will last. And I think they're my favorite ones to work on, truthfully. But I appreciate y'all watching. I mean, even the seat. Look, there's only one little tear in the seat right there. You never find the seats this good on these anymore. So, listen up for 750. We'll see how quick it sells. If everything, if it's selling like everything else right now, it'll sell within a few hours for asking price. Honestly, um, I know y'all won't see this video until almost September, but uh, I tell you what, in the heart of mowing season, I'm giving y'all content throughout the year and so i space my videos out accordingly but in the heart of mowing season especially the way that we've had weather this year with a little bit of coolness a little bit of rain it's hard to beat so thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed this video of the dlt um got a i don't know what i'm going to work on next i know i've got a push mower here that i got in for free i want to do a franken mower swap the motor on it put it on another deck we'll see when that comes about. I've got this XP 
Troy built horse that I got on trade, and then I got the Murray, and then the John Deere. I'd like to go in that order to fix them. The XP Troy built, I think I've got to do a little bit of work on the Kohler Courage because it's leaking oil just like all of them do. And uh, a couple other things. But for now, this is probably the nicest mower I'm going to have this year. And uh, I love it. <laughs> if y'all cannot tell. So thank y'all for watching as always. I'll catch you on the next video. You can catch me on Instagram and Facebook at ellismowers09 for any real-time updates of what I'm working on, if I'm still working or if I'm in a break. Either one, I'll tell you what my happenings are. Thank you all again for watching. Catch you on the next video.